I, I like to write science fiction too. So, uh, we'll go ahead and get started with this. The, what I want to talk about is doing a architecture for uh, sending humans out into the uh, inner solar system, something that we can do in the very near term uh, with much more budget than what's currently being proposed, uh, or I should say what is currently the law of land, um, and use as much as possible uh, commercial vehicles. These are all concepts and vehicles that have already flown um, or are so significantly composed of things that have already flown. Uh, for example, Falcon Heavy is really just three Falcon 9s bolted together. Um, so we will consider Falcon Heavy as part of it. Actually, we won't because I don't have a deep data on it yet. Um, but generally along those lines, and talk a little bit about what, what a fully commercial architecture would be to, to go out and explore the inner solar system. Uh, the only thing I've actually run the numbers for was a lunar landing mission. Um, so probably end up concentrating a little bit more on that, but all the concepts should apply to going to asteroids, going to Mars, going to Venus, or going to just about anywhere you might want to go. Um, so first of all, um, ground rules are that not only will we obey the law that made NASA in the first place, which says that thou shalt not compete with commercial enterprises, we're actually going to prefer a commercial solution anywhere it's available. So basically what we're going to say is that if a commercial company has said they can do it, and they have any kind of track record, track record at all of being able to do these types of things, we'll go ahead and, and use that. Um, two, keep the uh, budget low. And by low for human spaceflight standards, that means we want to try sticking to one to two B per year. Um, can't think of any other ground rules. What are ground rules to say anybody want? Mission lifetime. Okay. Uh, not mission lifetime. So if you're talking a budget, low budget per year, you have to have a high return on that budget to keep people interested. So the return, let's say, three to five years from award of contract to flight, if not half that. Yeah, a timetable. Okay. A uh, timetable. Like, like, like one is realistic, but not 10, 20 years, you know, like a near future, near horizon. Does that work? 20, yeah, 20 years just right now. now. Sure, done. The NAC, <coughs> the NAC meeting this week at Ames, Thursday they announced they're going to go uh, slingshot around the moon 2030 with heavy launch. SLS? Uh -huh. Yeah. Slingshot. Haven't we already done that with geo satellite accident? It wasn't by accident. Mark spent an hour planned it. We'll be waving to them as they go by. So. <laughs> uh, if you're looking for ground rules, you need really two on risk. Number one, what's the risk you're willing to take of killing an astronaut? Number two, what is the risk you're willing to take of having the entire program just plain fizzle out and die? Um, the risk that this whole thing's going to fizzle out and die is pretty high because, uh, quite frankly, the that's actually, we yep. require that risk by saying we only have one or two billion a year. Okay. But, and that we have to, the, the program must survive that funding. Okay, so that's part of your ground rules then. So, so that's a given. That that low budget is not just that you want it low, but you're going to say that's a... I would love to see it, you know, let's 10 assume, or 20 billion a year. Assume that funding. But assume right. this level of funding, Yes. and let's do something where we can demonstrate success at a rate high enough that people will keep calling their congressmen and saying, don't you cut this. So call it 50-50, we go to the moon, or we say we give it a restaurant. Um, say that again. A restaurant? <laughs> Our best shot. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought I didn't hear that right. Um, actually, moon cheese, man. Moon cheese. we are, are going to put down safety uh, level 
Um, greater than or equal to shuttle. Okay. Greater than or equal to shuttle over how many years? Is, is this is this just development cost or, oh, or the way, the operational? Okay, so operating development and operational. Yeah. How much was that for yeah. the shuttle? Uh, well, I mean, shuttles demonstrated that what ninety-eight point something odd percent two of the time losses. you won't kill an astronaut. Two losses per one hundred and thirty-five flights. Yep. Yep. Ninety-eight point three three. So not quite so. What is so? They lost two thousand. Ninety-nine. Yeah, they lost. Oh, this is just sheer number, not safety. Yeah. Well, it was pretty well, easy. If two well, how many, many losses? So I don't have yeah. They've had two lost. They've had two fatal accidents over 104, 105 flights now, something like that. Well, it's the same. -ish. About the same, so, yeah. yeah. But I guess I, I, if I remember right, so it is just a little bit better. It is. Are you including the, the yeah, the, all the way from the series generation one to two? Yeah, one, six, yeah. yeah. It, but they've had five generations. Yeah. And, and they haven't had a fatal accident since uh, the first generation. Yeah. So. And is that of people who are flying or of people who are working on it as well? Oh, yeah, the Russians lost a lot of ground. Yeah, just like NASA's um, lost ground crew. Yeah, NASA's, NASA's uh, a lot harder to quantify. It was not exactly the most impressive thing. Um, but we're going to leave it as, as safety overall, the okay. same as the shuttle program. Flight crews, uh, obviously, you know, like 98 point something percent. Uh, I'm not sure what the actual percentage is, but it must be better than what shuttle ground crew yeah, in terms of uh, lost time accidents. Um, Are we so emphasizing the, uh, and here's the question, is the emphasis for the actual band back on the moon and Mars, or is there also scientific purpose? Like, is there is this, like is the science above, or is the, the exploration above? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I, 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 I don't personally see a separation. I, I don't either, but like that, you know people see that sometimes. You know, the, they're, they're, there are those who think that robotic is, you know, the biggest return on, on investment. Uh, I think that when you start looking at actually being able to do uh, humans to other bodies for one, two billion a year, uh, that sort of changes the, the calculus. Uh, since instead of, you know, Apollo from size programs, you get a few chunks of uh, the rocks. Okay, how about... Um they have to stay there for a while. Uh, they have to set up a, a base, or it's like not just going to be hop down and come back. Right, build infrastructure. Well, a, you know, for this architecture right now, I want to get something to where we can get going and we can get some early successes. And uh, that's all the farther I'm going. So you want NASA to but pay we for do this? Want, we do want eventually for the architecture to say, to support the broadening out. Um, yeah, I mean, this is this is sort of a <coughs> who who is the only one funding human exploration in space right now? The Russians. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's not true. The Chinese, Chinese also pays send a little. guy one of these days again. I don't care any of them, but it, right now it is all national governments. There there is not yet a business case to be made for beyond lower orbit. That you know. Or or beyond uh, geosynchronous. We have plenty of business cases with GOC in this order. So, so sorry, I, I know I'm walking all over the place. So the, the objective of this is just to come up with an architecture that is yeah. profitable or just feasible, uh, assuming we can get NASA? It is, it is feasible <laughs> with NASA as the core customer. Okay, so we don't care about selling things back to Earth in and of itself, only insofar as it can be Not yet. We, we, we ex we, this is the, let's get enough human exploration of other bodies that we can determine whether there's actually profitable business to be made for myself to follow up with. Well, this is the this is the whole idea. We need to lose Clark expeditions to the asteroids and Mars, and then after that, I'll figure out whether or not I want to start taking pioneers there. So it's an, an assessment mission. So yeah, I mean it's it's it's, it's a proof what of concept it's well. what exploration is about. I mean that's. Exploration is historically a government funded activity. Pioneering and settlement that is a private activity that occurs after the initial exploration. You need you know, a motive and you need to articulate it. What is it that's going to get make people care? What's the reason? 
Well, my question is, why would you go back to the... Oh, okay, so I know the why would you go back to the you've been there before argument has been stated a billion times, but if you don't have a goal when you get there other than just checking it out again, we went there already to check it out. We, we want to do No, we did not go, go there to check, check it out. No. No. We went there to demonstrate to the Soviet Union that we, our missiles were better oh, yeah. than their missiles. Right, okay, and then proceeded yeah. to check it out. And then yeah. did a little bit of checking. We gave him a card. But like, what's the, the, the argument, like, why go there? You've been there before. Like, I, you look at any other type of exploration. Like, oh, somebody explored this place once. Ah, we shouldn't bother with that. Um, I mean, I, I'm of the argument, go back to, you know, if you're going to invest a, a limited amount of resource, you know, say you have a few billion dollars to put towards something, uh, you could go do another one-off mission, or you could actually, you know, do something that's going to have a higher return on investment where you're developing infrastructure as a part of something that will then enable that much right. more as you move forward. So saying just we're going to land there doesn't make sense to me. Saying we're going to land there to set something up. Okay, so I'm talking about transportation architecture. Right. I don't care why you want to go there. Okay, got so it. Right. Got it. There have been well, but I think a that's number the of... I mean, you have to care why you're going there. Yeah, you have to care why you're going there. That's where the problem is. Well, then, okay, okay. No, okay. it won't. I'm not. Stop, stop, stop. We should not spend. Yes, you are right. We're going to assume that we're going there to settle eventually. Okay. Okay. So okay. the initial thing is do that exploration that will enable settlement in the future. Okay. Right. If, if we I just assume that, I can yeah. kind of put a damper on the whole why thing. That's why we're keeping the budget so damn low, is so that nobody will care why. Yeah. We just go and do it. Mm -hmm. I think that needs to be a ground rule then, applicable to settlement. Has to be identified as you go along. Some some form of that. There has to be some constant reminder. To bring us back so to who's following the rules? We're following the rules. Are the rules for the program following? Uh, yeah, these are program rules. All right. Yeah, generally. Now, how do we go about developing the Um. So I'm going to cut off the ground rules here. I think we pretty much have everything and start developing the architecture. Um, by the way, the only reason I put down the moon, and I said this starting off, was because I ran some numbers for the general architecture. It should work for other places, but I specifically did a bunch of numbers for the moon. Um, mostly because that was sort of the easiest and a bunch of other reasons that my folks Um so, architecture itself. Um, first of all, oh, I should have probably put this in the ground rules. At no single point should we have a single technolo technology solution. Or a single vehicle, I should say. In other words, we're not going to say everything we do here is going to be on Atlas V. We're not going to say everything that we do here is going to be on SpaceX. Agnostic. Keep your options open. Six. Engage competition. Redundant. Spell, Billy. Really. Push the red squiggly. <laughs> <laughs> and and I can't look. And, and how about actual vehicle commonality? for the exploration architecture. In your faces. Try to make the Mars land, like if you're going to go to the moon, yeah, you yeah. might as well put the moon with the same vehicle you land on Mars with. That, that's a, that might be a gravity problem. Not, no, because if you can land on um, Mars, you can land on that's the moon. That's also an aerodynamic problem. problem. Yeah. Oh, because you're going to need aerobrake. He's not going to need propulsive braking for Mars. Yeah, I think there's, there's actually a reason to think that it's going to land on The gravity difference is huge as well. But the performance envelope of a Mars lander is definitely been... Going, going from low Martian orbit to the surface of Mars and back again is the same approximate delta V as going from Earth's surface to orbit. Mm -hmm. Whereas going from low lunar orbit to uh, lunar surface and then back again is about one half the delta V required. Right, but, but what I'm saying is that therefore the vehicle that can land on Mars can also land on the moon. If it is not using air, if it, air, if it is if it is a propulsive landing. Yeah, if you're not returning. 
but the reverse is not true. And if we're trying to return to the moon on 2020 on a budget, I don't think we want to hamstring ourselves by demanding Certainly the additional not. performance of a Mars lander. That's something that can be added incrementally um, later. Yeah, so moving forward. Uh, first of all, we have to consider launch systems. Nope, actually, we're going to go backwards. Uh, that would actually, starting off with launch systems would be backwards. Let's, let's start off at our destination. Um, two years ago, three years ago, some number of years ago, um, United Launch Alliance published a uh, presented a paper at an AIAA conference um, called Full Thrust Axis Landing System. What they do is take a um, Centaur, which is the upper station of the Atlas V, add four additional thrusters to it, and land the thing on the moon so that it's you imagine your Centaur stage, our all 10 rocket engine on the back, and then four additional rocket engines, and it lands on the surface of the moon. Didn't I see this in a really wretched television series <laughs> once upon a time? <laughs> uh, Space 1999, perhaps? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know what? Maybe they had a decent idea there. Uh, in the paper, they described the whole uh, the whole thing, the amount of uh, work needed to get this to where you could actually just land a, a centaur on the moon is actually fairly minimal. Uh, current estimates are somewhere in the range of about... 50 million? That's it. Sounds about right. Um, well, the thing is, the Centaur is already there. All the hard work has been done. All you need to do is add four smallish engines. Probably somewhere on the order of a thousand pound thrust each. Centaur is unmanned, correct? Um, the modified? Centaur, they, they, they describe several different ways of doing a Centaur, uh, including a, a human on board option. One single human on board? Uh, I don't know how they, they do can do They can do something like six or seven of them. So, so, so it's a yeah. useful payload from, from, Earth, from Earth to the moon, what's a useful payload on the moon and lunar surface? So, uh, the, what I looked at for this, uh, we came out to about six metric tons okay. of useful payload for the does that include fuel? Um, that's useful to the surface and gets you back up to orbit, uh, to a lunar orbit. Actually, what I looked at was uh, using the Lagrange points, L2 and L1, as the, well, well, we'll get to that. So anyway, we need to get this from a lunar orbit of some sort down to the surface and then back. Six vector tons and fully reusable. So where does it go to come from? And I've chosen, it can be either L1 or L2. Uh, there's a slight difference, but it's fairly small uh, difference in uh, performance requirements between the two. ULA in the paper said it prefers L2 because we're going to put a fuel depot at the Lagrange point. And at the end, that's just going to be another Centaur stage, or series of Centaur stages. The nice thing about that, and being at L2, is that you then keep the thermal radiation from the Earth, which enables them to cut down their loss of, of liquid hydrogen in the stage by a so small amount. A little bit better than if it were, say, L1, where you can deal with both the sun thermal issue and the earth thermal issue. So they prefer L2. L2 is behind the moon? Yeah. yeah. Um, so L1, L2 is again use a uh, centaur. And again, ULA has actually written papers on this um, about at using Centaur as anchor. And fuel depot. Are these all going to be Centaur rockets? Just uh, you know, um, I would love it if I had enough data to put SpaceX couple stages into this. 
but one, they actually don't use <laughs> hydrogen and oxygen, they don't publish the data, enough data, and yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we can we can consider anything. I, 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 like I said, basically, I'm just going to say, hey, provide us a tanker and a fuel depot. We know that Centaur can do it. Who else wants to do it? There are a number of other upper stages with very similar capabilities. The Delta Five upper stage is similar. The Russian KBRB that isn't quite operational yet. Yeah. Even the Chinese have one in the Ariane's cryogenic upper stages are very similar to this. The only problem with uh, the Delta Four, the Delta Four and the Atlas Five are the same company. So going with the uh, redundant. Yes. I, I definitely want others to say, hey, why don't we uh, do modifications to our upper stage or whatever. And I really don't care if it's uh, foreign or, or domestic, personally. So where's this leading? Hmm? Where's this leading? Um, well, we'll continue on. So now we know we have to get propellants. The tankers to L1, L2, that fills up from this, which becomes a, a round trip. Um, I'm running out of places to... That's a one second. I'm going to run out to get my big whiteboard. So, next part of this is, uh, for every launch of this, then we have to do a fuel depot. It turns out we're going to need about three tanker poles to support that. How big is it a tanker in this? Uh, it, it's a centaur. Okay. Or whatever equipment we come up with. How much does a centaur launch cost? How much is what? Centaur mission go for these days? Um, the centaur itself is actually pretty darn cheap, but if you're putting up an Atlas V or a Delta IV, uh, you're looking at somewhere between 150, 200,000, 200 million dollars per launch. Okay. Sounds like that. Uh, depending on your exact configuration. Yeah. Um, so, so at that point, we need three tankers to go from, actually from Leo, because that's the next part we have to worry about. Yeah. Um, so at Leo, we're going to need a number of flights. You know, we're basically just going to take, we're going to do one launch to get the, the landing centaur up. We're going, and, and actually that becomes two centaurs stacked on top of each other on your Alice uh, 5, 5, 1. Can I do that? Yep. Okay. 5, 5, 1 or 5, 5, 2. Actually, 5, 5, 5, 2 is probably better. How many have they done it before? Uh, no. Guess, no. 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 No, they haven't done it before, but they, they swear they can't because the centaur does fit within their 5.4 meter carriage. That would be sweet. That is a hell of a lot of going to be. Well, it's interesting. The, the, uh, the centaur itself is, if you were to fill it up, start off on orbit, is about 10,100, 10,200 feet per second. Don't pay a little obviously. You know, starts attracting by putting Halo to it. Um, so you have the uh, tankers. Uh, so basically, we end up doing tankers circling between L1 and Leo. Uh, let's see. We have the, the lander itself needs to get launched. <laughs> we have better options. <laughs> oh, yes! We got the Dave! <laughs> I didn't have time to make a go. <laughs> There you go. Awesome. So this is that one's $2 billion budget. Uh, yeah.
Master, uh, Master, we came up with a new design for you. <laughs> Call it the America. <laughs> that looks like something the Dicker Tan would like. <laughs> Oh, like like fly anything. <laughs> <laughs> he will fly like a fly. Yeah. <laughs> They're making one? They're making one. Has anyone ever made a flyable Lego airplane? That I hope so. would yeah, be interesting. <laughs> 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 That's a terrible idea. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a glue. That's not like a terrible idea. That would be just a glue airplane with plastic. <laughs> That's called composite. Does a kid do that Dave? technic stuff that had motors? Yeah, yeah. Those are great. So, so okay. far we got three tankers and a lander headed to the LK. So, yeah, three tankers plus a uh, lander and astronaut somewhere on this. We have six tons. I don't care how many astronauts you put on there. <laughs> <laughs> One really fat astronaut. <laughs> <laughs> Can't do that to the um, Initially, probably two. <laughs> Just because, you know, the first time around, yeah. it's, it's a flight test of the vehicle. You better but, have a buddy down there. You're going to screw something up. Yeah, as you're saying. Well, we'll probably actually send, we'll, we'll actually probably send, uh, I, would, I would say send four to your Lagrange point. Send two down the surface too, the Lagrange point, right. and then. Uh, okay. Humans yeah. aren't a weight concern so much as they are a volume concern. That is correct. So, yeah, we're getting bogged down in the details. Um, so the volume of a centaur is huge. All right. <laughs> uh, okay, is it like a three meter diameter? Uh, four meter. Four meter diameter. Um, quite long. Yeah, there's. You could. You could. Probably stick a dragon capsule on the front end of the centaur and not mess with its, yeah, and, and probably the whole, you could put a lot in front of the centaur, it's not a problem at all. Um, yeah, volume is not an issue, weight is not an issue, as long as you keep it within that six tons or so. Um, okay, so basically we need to get enough propellant and systems to Leo to get it out to L2. So uh, once again, we're going to do some, uh, this all requires fuel, uh, uh, fuel depots, so we're going to have a Leo fuel depot. The major issue with Leo is that from just about any place that we might launch from, actually from anywhere you can launch from, it just doesn't matter. Uh, you're going to have to bring everything together in Leo, and then you have only limited windows. I believe it's two a month, roughly, um, from any given orbit to uh -huh. your L1 or L2. You can put a coplanar with the moon. You're limited in your daily launch windows then, but you're limited there anyway. Uh, it turns out that's not quite true. Okay, why? Uh, the moon doesn't actually the moon and Earth, co what is coplanar today is not coplanar tomorrow. Is it bobbing? Yeah, but that cycle takes years. Oh, I see your problem. <laughs> <laughs> and plane changes are on water. <laughs> um, so yes, there, there is some difficulty with this, but it's, it's not insurmountable, and quite frankly, Twice a month, that's, that's pretty good. It's actually not bad, yeah. Twice a month is, is actually not that bad. Um, might want to consider having a maybe a, a dragon or something similar that we might want to set up for doing a quick emergency mission if we need to. Um, we have to have additional delta V available uh, just to, to get it so that you end up coplanar uh, before you leave. But Still, on, on the Atlas V uh, configurations, uh, you're using primarily At Atlas uh, V uh, 401, which is their base configuration, four meter fairing, um, and uh, no solids, and a single engine Centaur. 
we can move a lot of propellant. It would take about six flights to get enough propellant to fill up our three tankers. Um, and how, how many launch pads are there for Atlas and how quickly can it be launched? Because of the, the, I mean, it's liquid hydrogen, right? So it's. There's one pad. There's only, there's 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 just one. There's, there's the only one pad for the Atlas V. Uh, there's another pad for Delta IV. Okay. Um, you can pretty much, for the ground to Leo segment, Delta IV, Atlas V, whatever. Yep. Falcon 9. Falcon Heavy, we <coughs> do it in like two launches. We get all the fuel we need up to the depot. <laughs> Real quick, if we wanted to launch everything we had all in the same window, you know, barring the fact that they have to be stacked, if not, you know, each other, how, how many launches is it? How many launches is that? So we're looking at up to nine launches if we go with... If we like, uh, with everything at the same time. In one month. In one month? Or, well, I was thinking, yeah, in, one, in every two weeks, or the, the, the one open window for which it would be appropriate. Well, the thing is, is you're not going to, you're not... You're going to look at, we need to be in this plane at this date, and then six weeks, eight weeks in advance, start shipping up propellants to a Leo Depot. Uh, and then when you're a few days out from the actual transfer window, uh, then you'll go ahead and launch your astronauts. Um, it depends on how short a time span you want your astronauts in Leo. You know, wait, right up to maybe just a few minutes beforehand, put them in the uh, video and then, and then move them to the So, yeah, basically, uh, one, one uh, commercial enterprises, uh, including Willie, have, have wanted to do all this. Um, we're looking at a total, um, yeah, it turns out that in order to get these three tankers up, this lander, and six loads of uh, fuel and propellants up there. We're looking at, what, 10, 10 launches at 200 million apiece. So we're about $2 billion for that one mission. So for that one mission now, um, what is the failure tolerance of this, of this program of exploration? Like, if we lose the launcher on the way up, how fault tolerant is it? Uh, if we actually go ahead and do it in a way that we have launch contracts with ULA on both systems, uh, both Delta and Atlas, and we have SpaceX, and um, I believe Orbital has a system be large enough to, to fill in at the Atlas V level, yeah, you're looking at a lot of the, uh, fault tolerance. <coughs> um, if you if it's a propellant that you lose on your way up, who cares? Uh, Propellants cheap. Um, so yeah, that, there's a lot of fault on this. Uh, the main issues right now, in terms of um, parallel vendors, redundancy would be, you know, who who else wants to provide the do for us to access lander? More importantly, who else could license it from ULA or build one around their own upper stage? What? Or build one around their own upper stage? Yeah. Well, I, I'm. There may be some IP issues with uh, dual cross access lander for the moment. Uh, I believe the patent's from 1999. I don't think we have dates. Well, if it's from 1999, guess what? We have another eight years to wait. Uh, I mean, okay, uh, but we're, we've got until 2020, so, okay. In your professional uh, estimation, how long until L1 and L2 are legitimate hot property? Uh, it depends on how soon somebody s starts funding these types of architecture. Give me your best guess. I, I'm not, that's all political. Okay. That's probably political at this point. I hear you. Um, actually, I understand that right now, uh, L2 is already becoming sort of a, a popular place. But we're really talking about halo orbits around L1, L2, so there is a fair amount. Technically, yes. Yes. Yeah, it's not like it's a point and the first person there is the only one who can use it. Right, right, right. There's, there's, right. There is some real estate space there, but there's... Uh, but the science guys are all arguing and complaining about each other. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm your infrared spillover. Well, put up a shield, idiot. Come on now. <laughs> you don't own L2. <laughs> right. I'm going to try and tell you that it's unstable. So you don't want to be at one, one big the other. Yeah. And the, the fuel that you're going to use for station keeping. Yeah. These are the droids. Centaur is designed to do station keeping. Yeah, this is crappy land. 
uh, no one wants to <laughs> Iceland, really. You know. But the takeaway from this is that on the order of 10 launches of a vehicle sized for the commercial communication satellite market will put you on the order of five tons on the moon and back. Yes. But that's a whole lot of launches. I mean, like, I, I, I'm, I'm one of the only people in this whole sector that actually likes heavy lift. Because when I look at that many launches, I look at that many times at any, the, not necessarily the, you know, that the, that the people can screw up, but political will can wane, money can run out, you know, over, if you're spreading a whole thing over 10, that's 10 times of a long period that things can go wrong. Sounds like jobs to me. Well, but it's also developing that heavy lift, unless you're saying that you use existing. I, I just buy Falcon on heavy. Well, well I, 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 don't, I don't care how many, you know, Actually, if you right. want a contractor to to uh, heavy lift uh, yeah. two Falcon heavies, yeah. that's yeah, not mutually exclusive. Whatever it takes to get right. up there. Yeah, it's whatever it takes to get stuff up there. Yeah. This has some benefits to uh, whatever it takes to get stuff up there. Yeah. If you sign a contract for ten successful launches, you're done. Right. It's on the, the it's provider. Done. Yeah. You're, you're Somebody else. Manifest. Once you're on the manifest, everything. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't matter. What and and but like and since so this is open for instance, if you look, look, let's say you win the contract on the Atlas. Like what is the fastest that they can put those things up there? It's like, like I mean, because I mean, like processing time for those launch vehicles that's themselves. That's thing, yeah, yeah it's processing time to launch vehicles. So yeah. um, I, I don't think don't they have ever. They don't know their capacity. Because they they've don't know. It. They yeah. when they first took the Atlas V concept to the airport, or yeah, when they first turned in their proposals to the airport, the airport pretty much demanded they do. Um, they were saying somewhere in the order of 50 launches a year. Okay. I think I mean, I now, think historically, that. how frequently have they actually launched? Does anybody know? Like, like how, how about close? Ten percent of that, maybe fifteen. Like they're they're in the neighbor they're in the neighborhood of double digits. Low, low double digits. Okay, so but that that's market 15. driven, not capability. Right. So. Okay, so maybe once a month. Right. Just, uh, just well, the thing is, is is yeah. I think they've actually done a couple of launches from the same site. Um, and also, by the way, depending on which LD orbit you pick, there might be multiple sites you launch off. Mm -hmm. Um, where they actually have done fairly back to back of uh, uh, that with some vehicles. Okay, they, they've gotten. They can, very they can close. certainly turn around in 14 days. They can probably do it in 10. They can probably learn to do it in 7. Yeah. Um, and speaking to one strange, what is the oil off rate on a, on a well configured Centaur these days in L2? So like, uh, well, actually, for L2, uh, they, the ULA actually has a, a design uh, which puts up a sunshade around it. Uh, well, off rate ends up being, I think they said they were getting it down to about 1% a year. Oh, oh okay. So, so you can't actually park them for a long yes. time. Yes. Wow. I'm used to be seeing this going poof. Got no, nothing. No, wow. Are. The Centaur itself has actually demonstrated some uh, pretty good oil off rates. Mm -hmm. uh, with, like, for example, on the old uh, Very low oil off. So. Nice. Just verification on the 50. I was speaking to Mark Sarangelo last weekend at the conference. Mm -hmm. And he mentioned he could get at least 50 from them um, for the LS5, just for his dream case. So he can get as many of them out as he wants, he said. Yeah, and he's counted the number of started. Yeah. Uh, Tiffany Titus? She's busy. Um, I'm just going to wondering, <laughs> are you planning to, do you want to forfeit your uh, presentation here? or? I'm done. It's we're Tiffany's room. We're way over. Yeah. Yeah. I think we're you way, we're way over. The time yeah. if you want. I don't care. <laughs> Sorry, it's your turn. Well, I'm playing with Legos and listening to your talk. <laughs> Yay. It's your choice. If you want forfeit, I will pull down your uh, thing. I can change the time if there's one after. Oh, did we need to? Yes. If you want to keep talking, there's good discussion. So. <laughs> Dave, uh, Dave, you have a four. Um, no pressure. <laughs> okay, um, MDA. All right, I like them because they just signed a big contract with Intelsat to refuel. Um, who, you said it's political, right? So you're talking money, but private capability-wise, who do you see doing this? Um, I see a, a number of vendors. Um, ULA has expressed interest in, in providing centaurs to be used as uh, dual trust access lander. Uh, there's some politics involved with their ownership and their ownership probably doesn't want them to actually provide those at this point. But that's because they're, one of their owner companies is bids working on SLS, basically. I see. Um, so there's some conflicts of interest within their own corporate culture. Uh, there are ways around that. Um, 
And ULA itself is more than happy to provide those. Um, they just have to follow some rules about how they go about bidding that. So, so. Would you say, though, that based on, I mean, all I'm talking about is just contracts, just business, that MBA would be in a unique position to offer something like capability like this? Um, I'm sure MDA could. Just seems kind of like what they're not already doing. Personally, what they would I like would to do. love to develop the, uh, the, the landing part portion of the, the Centaur bit. What is your right. role? What, what, what is Mask and Space Systems? And let's go oh, by the way, I am not here representing Mask and Space Systems. Okay. All right, you're not representing Mask and Space Systems. Let's say Armadillo wants a piece of action, X Corps wants a piece of action. I don't think probably wouldn't, but you know. Like, Excuse me? Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to track, guys. I feel like we're in X Corps developing liquid hydrogen rocket engines. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. But you can already get it. Like you know, like the, the size is not public. I okay. I do. I don't know what I can talk about yet. I don't mean nothing. Then talk about nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, there are a number of companies I'm sure would love to have pieces of developing this. This. I'm sure there are plenty of companies that would love to develop pieces of this. Uh, Boeing has already done and has indicated additional interest in propellant depots. Both Lockheed and ULA have indicated interest in propellant EVOs up until they started working on Constellation, at which point Lockheed said, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, we, we want to work on our thing. Um, I, 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 yeah, I mean, there are actually a number of companies that would love to work on every single part of this. And we would be putting in bids for every single bit of it. Some of those companies will try to bid on a Cost plus basis. Others will say, "That only, you know, I really want to do this fixed price." So there's plenty of plenty of flexibility in how to. I mean, redundancy and parallelism is not a problem for the architecture because there's plenty of companies that want to do it every single different way you want to think of. You mentioned something there that reminded me. NASA is big into this idea right now, or at least they want to be a flexible path. Do we want to fit this into that in some way? This does. This fits very well. I mean, I don't care. But basically, once you have orbital depots at Leo, um, L1, L2, L5, um, you can start with only minor modifications using this. Uh, perhaps uh, launch a couple of uh, big old modules and put together a nice big spaceship that can take a fairly large crew to Mars. Um, one of the things that I think has come out of, of some of these uh, small groups sequestered away for years at a time trying to figure out whether a journey to Mars is practical with a small crew, mm -hmm. the result I keep seeing every time I read all the, 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 the results from that is send a large enough group of people in a large enough space <laughs> And you can deal with all the, 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 the interpersonal issues uh, that have come up, um, which is not possible if you have a small time capsule. So I, I would add, throw in at that point, the big low ha um, habitats, the number of the big low modules. Mars 500 is done well in its younger What? You know, Mars 500 over in Russia, they've, they haven't really had any interpersonal issues, and they've been in there over a year. That they're publishing. Oh, wow. Right. I don't, I don't trust, I really do not trust I, I don't trust NASA's reports of interpersonal conflict. I do not trust Russia's reports of interpersonal contract conflict. I have spoken to people who have been on this on station, who have been in training. There have been fist fights. Yeah. Yeah. Like I don't trust the PR. Okay. If they say it's going fine, like it means that no one's like killed another person yet. <laughs> so like that you brought that up. It's, it's just so true. Level of injuries are down to deep bruises and <laughs> yeah. a couple of scars. Yeah. So, so the reason is bruises from friends in Florida. I said I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> so the reason I mentioned the flexible path thing is I don't know if you're aware of the lunar research park proposal that just got turned down in Los Angeles. Um, the they, they they were developing this lunar research park. They're mm -hmm. going back to the moon. And they put a phenomenal amount of scientists there that just loved the idea. They, they had a few conferences there, getting up and going. And HQ warned them, warned them, warned them again. I was a few people about this. And they, they just got, two weeks ago, they got told to cancel it, that they can't do it. 
and the only reason is because they didn't put some subtitle thing. This is on, in line with flexible path. And they were just pushing heavily. Let's go back to the moon. Let's go back to the moon. Um, and it's like silly. I said when I started out. Yeah, I'm gonna go right back to it. The only reason I said return to the moon is because that's what I've already run the numbers for. Right. No, I completely understand it. I, it's more of a point of just. But this yeah, no, you can once. Once you start doing things like propellant depots, mm -hmm. and you take the technologies ULA has already said they're willing to do, and I know other companies are willing to do, it is all flexible path. You can go anywhere in the, in the solar system with that. Um, it's just how many, how many, how many tankers do you need to deliver from surface to Leo? Now, the, the other thought I have is we're, we've done a lot of going to the Leo. If we're going out to L2 or L1, why not use a GTO type of launch? Why send it off to Leo first? Um, GTO gives you another element that you have to match in your phasing, which kind yeah. of takes things. Yeah, GTO, GTO is actually, uh, well, yeah, GTO is really not in the way. Um, if you're talking like a GTO-like orbit that goes straight to L1, yeah, something um, there's, delta v, there's, there's delta V issues and, and total mass uh, mass issues. And the way you get to those orbits anyway in the real world is to put yourself in a LEO parking orbit first and then boost out there. If you're going to be assembling components to do this, you might as well do that as early as possible. And your scheduling issues are much easier in there. Yeah. So it's the scheduling and the ease of assembly. For, that's the case for LEO. Pretty much. Uh, just kind of a question that's apropos of nothing, like, you know, does it take, I guess you can hit any longitude and any, uh, any latitude on the moon on your landing phase, right? You can basically... From, from the Lagrange points, yes. Yeah, okay. So you can come over a polar landing, more or less. You, you could do a polar landing from all the way. And you don't yeah, have any launch window sessions. issues going from L1 or L2 to the moon. Yeah, you pull. Right, you can pick any orbit any time. So what? Why? So this looks reasonable. What would? What would? In pitching this, what, what would be? What are you up against? Like you know, what? What? Like this seems reasonable. Why wouldn't this work politically? Why wouldn't this work? The, et cetera. That was that was yesterday. Okay. 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 <laughs> um, yeah. There there are a number of. So first of all, there there are a couple of technology developments that actually need to occur. Um, of course, the companies have all. The interest in this have all said we'd love to develop it. Give us any excuse to work on this at all, and and, it'll, and consider it done. Um, of course, that excuse is they want a little money to, to finish it up. Um, the, the rest of it is I don't know. Apparently, this isn't enough jobs for people in Huntsville. Uh, this, this does not preserve any sacred cows. Well, one. That's a pretty small count. Um, small count. <laughs> we don't understand why, because last time I checked, centaurs are built in the same place that the senator from Marshall is supposed to be representing. That one's a mystery. <laughs> and you're asking a lot of it, too. Yeah. yeah. Yep. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I'm asking for a lot of them here. Yeah. It's like a big <laughs> order. That's like. Hey, you got like a hundred centaurs, they'll take them. <laughs> <laughs> Guys are running through the thing. Guys, you got the deal. <laughs> no, we got a lot of launches, so you think that uh, the Senator would be happy with this? That's right. Because you have a lot of, a lot of material out of it. can't be that. And once again, because we're doing a lot of launches, uh, several of them with humans on board, and we're talking about fairly long term. Talking about needing a lot of, a lot of more and MCC type people. That should take care of Houston. I'm sorry, a lot of what type of people? Michigan. 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 Okay. So, so this basically, I mean, it would appear to me that this is something that, that if NASA wants a actual flexible path exploration system, this this should be presented as a replacement for that. Maybe there should be they should just be clearinghouse for checks effectively to make this kind of system occur. Uh, they're going to be doing more than just clearinghouse for for checks. There's going to be, I mean, we are talking about astronauts on board, and that's quite frankly, they have to be NASA. Do you want to sell it? <laughs> Do you want someone to fund, fund it? it? <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> you want Congress to fund it? Yes, they need to pass it. Yeah, competition. I was, we were chatting about that a second ago. You know, as much as I think you that... You know what? The, Actually, you don't need competition. What kept the momentum of the shovel going? What kept the past 30 years? Speaking of jobs. Really yes, keep them doing something. How many jobs is it? I keep hearing that. Look, how many jobs, how many people? It's on the order of tens of thousands. Tens of thousands. Not this. No, 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 no not this, but like, Lost. shovel is tens of thousands of people. Yeah. Uh, they're estimating, I, I think it was 6,000 people at KSC are being laid off. Yep. Over the I've heard seven. But, I mean, like, yeah. every day in the, in the corporate world, you hear about an enormous order of magnitude more being laid off, you know, daily. Do off. you? I, I don't think, I don't we're think it's... We're shutting 80,000, 80,000 It's not just as much jobs, it's the jobs at companies that give campaign funds to... Right. Vocal. Yeah. If 80,000 jobs disappear from 10,000 companies, there's nothing a senator can do about that. Disappears from one center, there is something a center can do about that. Because that's something curious. I mean, it sounds like a very low amount, and their tag is obviously not the tax revenues. Because then they'd be more worried about keeping oh, more people employed in the state in general. Not oh, okay. it's it's well, point of the these are concentrations of high paying jobs, yeah. which is very different from. More importantly, you have the concentration of companies with large political action. Well, how do we get one of that? Uh, space so, this is one question. And I know you're not up there to represent that. And I know you guys, we can, the, the architecture of your vehicles, or massive vehicles, let's separate you, and for exports, is to have a minimal ground crew. Yes. Yeah. How do we transition from a humongous ground crew to a minimal ground crew? The capabilities is already there. I, NASA never adequately responded to computers. Yeah. They, they, yeah. they, they, they have this huge workforce that is appropriate when you need that many people to focus on that many tasks, but now that you have programs to run it, it's unnecessary, but that means firing people. Or it means increasing your capability, which is how they should have responded, but, but didn't, and I don't know if there's a reason for that. They just kept the same number of people for the same output, even though output capability has increased. Hmm. So it's going to be less people. And I don't really know how else you want to argue that. I mean, you're seeing the same thing now. And like, it's bureaucratic inertia. Part of how you solve that is instead of, what's, what's, what's HSF for the uh, Exploration Systems Mission Director at Budget this past year? Uh, well, I know SLS itself was getting what, three billion in the, in the latest house things? But, but oh, wait, 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 I mean, they're actually gonna write that check for that. Like, it's good, that, that's gonna go through to uh, Ways and Means, and that's gonna, is NASA gonna get, a, is that money gonna happen? Is that, are they already fucking oh, serious? Oh, uh, well, we don't know. We don't know where there's, you know, that didn't get up for a vote before they, before recess, before congressional recess, they'll, they'll come back and they'll consider it. Um, they'll have to go to conference between the House and Senate. You know, the Senate's going to pass something completely different. Right. Um, which, we, one thing we do know about the Senate is the Senate's not going to say uh, cancel James Webb. They're not going to say that. They're really? not going to say that. Good. Wow. Call your senator. Uh, unfortunate. Yeah, 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 they do that. Because there is a certain senator from Maryland who has My guy. happens to be on the right committee yes, and has some yeah. say about it. So. So we gotta keep those daughters. So the back. thing is, if you could get all these people and all this money to do a bunch more stuff that was cool, that wouldn't be so, you know, depressing. Well, that's, that's, you know, I'm still looking at, you know, we've got all these, these people that are, quote unquote, being laid off. The perfectly good engineers and technicians yeah. that should be doing research and development. <laughs> yeah. Just go with it, Randall. <laughs> Just learn to shut your mouth and go with it. And our culture is toxic. That's funny. Some of them can be retrained. <laughs> yeah. What, what do you think the defining feature is between the two? 
Who's, uh, is it is it a, an age themselves. thing? Is it just a personality thing that's sort of? Is it's it a an age, spoiled it's an thing? Driven thing. Personalities are involved. But basically, if somebody's been working at a NASA center for ten years, they've been captured by the system and they cannot be retrained as entrepreneurs. They're stuck. Hmm. I, I remember when I when I gave a talk about new space to uh, for people at a big event I was at. Um, uh, a, a girl from Ames comes up to me afterward and asks me, her question was something on the order of, what kind of process management system do these companies use? And I, and I looked at her and I feel bad about this, don't this day, but I said, you're asking, that is the wrong question to ask entirely. Yeah. Um, I'm actually surprised to hear that from some of the names. Yeah. Ames and Goddard are the two centers of which that is least true. And, and Marshall is probably the most true. But it was just a very interesting question because I'm mean, asking there, and I, I actually asked it repeated a couple of times so I could make sure I understood, and I still didn't quite understand it. Cause it, was, it was so outside of the I mean, like, was she asking about what our task tracking system was? Maybe she, she wanted me? to know if you were Six Sigma compliant. Oh God! Yeah. Sorry, I had to get Six Sigma training, and it's, I wish that Are they gave us belt? cards. No, I'm not a black belt. I'm only a green belt. But I really want a card so I can whip it out at completely inappropriate times and be like, don't worry, I'm Six Sigma trained. <laughs> Everyone can calm down now. <laughs> it's, it's a very, for, for those of you that. 88% of the parts I make will be quality. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's just really. It's not about quality, it's about documented quality. It can be very low quality. That's yeah, what you documented. That's what she was asking about. Now I get it. She wanted to know how we're documenting parts. I, I didn't even know. Because if you if you have no integrity as an organization, documentation is how you solve that problem. Yeah, also if your workers are crap and are never encouraged to be more than crap, it's a problem. You can expect it. Well, crap you can count on. That's why I go to Denny's. That's why I don't go to Denny's. I wonder what the viewers at home are thinking. Well, um, all right now. Yeah. Yeah. Viewers at home? No. Usually about three. Okay, so how are you going to try to sell this to people with $2 billion? Somebody call Charlie $2 billion. Billion. No, he won't. Oh, actually, no, I mean, I mean, he's honestly, the commercial part. Trouble? Honestly, no, I'm not really. He's, he is of two very deeply conflicted minds about that. Um, I've, I've, and I've heard both minds, and they've both been very convincing. It's very strange. Um, it, it seems like every other day he believes that, that, that commercial space is the only way he's going to keep an agency. And then on the alternate days, his inner, his inner astronaut comes out, and he knows we can't do it. So he's... But you know, um, The nice thing is, is he you don't either. necessarily convince the person. You convince his office yeah. and his administration. His office is already on, on, on this side. Yeah. That's true. Um, yeah, so that's that's not so much an issue. I think at this point it's mostly uh, refining this, and uh, glad I had a chance to talk this out with everybody. Um, this will then turn into something more, something more. Um, and in the meantime, yeah, just you know, let's uh, kill the Senate Space Man system. <laughs> and, uh, Money to Office of the Chief Technologist so that you can fund some of these uh, crazy ideas and sell the whole and start sell, up selling the whole thing. Uh, this is, uh, for the most part, this is pretty much just taking everything right out of the Augustine Commission report and putting real hardware next to it. So. That's it. Have I now used, uh, yes, I have now yep. used. Both time slots to the full. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have you actually read the SLS bill? Hmm? Yes, the actual Senate Long System like bill.